Good morning, Nativity Online, or good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are, welcome. We are so glad you are here. I am Tom, joined by Brian. Hey. Yeah, we got Brian back. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes, but we're so glad to have Brian. We're so glad to have you with us, and we invite you to get into our chat room. That's the way we can best serve you. Let us know who you are, where you're from, and if you want to take a guess where Brian's been over the last year and a half, why he's not been in front of the camera. Maybe he's been on vacation, sabbatical, playing tennis, golf, who knows. But anyway, if you can let us know what you think Brian's went up to in the, uh, in the chat room, we'd love, or and, you know, share anything else you want about yourself as well That's in right. the chat. That's right. I'd love to connect with you in the chat. Also, at the beginning of our broadcast, we always want to encourage everybody watching online to share this experience. You never know who might need some encouragement from the music, the message, from our church celebration uh, this morning. So whatever platform you're watching on, hit that share button. If you've got a friend or a family member, send them a text, send them an email. A fax, carrier pigeon, <laughs> fax. whatever you've got. Uh, let other people know that they can tune in right now to be a part uh, of the final week of our series, which we'll also be talking about in a second, because uh, you never know whose uh, life you might impact just with a simple share. Yeah, so share this experience. And if you are here because someone has shared it with you, welcome. We love welcoming new people into our community. We love it so much. We have a gift to thank you for being with us today. Simply text the word welcome to 410 216 Five five three four. That's four one zero two one six five five three four. Text the word welcome, and we will send you a gift to thank you for being with us today. So I alluded to this earlier. Yeah, I feel like I should text the word welcome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like I feel kind of new to this. It's You're been new to a this, long yeah. time. Yeah. Well, so when was the last time you were in front of the camera? In front of the camera, I think it was the week after Christmas, twenty twenty one. So that would have been January first of January, second of January, twenty twenty one. So okay. a year and a half ago. Okay, so yeah, it's been... Like, Christmas 2020, 18, anyway. 18. 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. So <laughs> okay, sorry. What, did, what have you been doing? You've been goofing off? Uh, been... I have been goofing off for sure, because I always goof <laughs> off. But uh, so because of COVID, uh, my job has taken me a little bit more behind the camera. So I'm working with our creative tech team, all our production crew, audio, video, lighting guys. So I'm usually up in the control room or behind the scenes, kind of helping to support the weekend, helping to support... Our, our, our own camera talent like you, Tom. Yeah, we call Making it, sure that we, we you've got everything talent. you need. That's what, that's what they call it in the behind the scenes, yeah, the we, talent. So you can determine that if that's true or yeah, not. Right. But uh, yeah, so Brian's been supporting us. It's great to have you back here. And, uh, and shout out to all the people that are serving this weekend, all our ministers running cameras and punching buttons. Thanks for serving. Yeah, I'll Brian, be back next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so this isn't going to be a... Nor uh, 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 Usual thing. I don't think so. Okay, just just this yeah, week. All right. Well, we, everyone misses you, Brian. So you know, let let us know in the chat if you've missed Brian. That'd be great. We'd love to hear that. So uh, we're happy to have Brian. We're happy to have all of you with us. Uh, and a busy weekend here at Nativity. A lot going on. Yeah. So. Energy behind us, but more than today, even yesterday, we had a lot going on. Yeah, we had our first communion, and we had two first communions. So we had one at the so big 120 uh, first communicants, one at 2:30, and one at five o'clock, and so. Uh, my daughter Lydia was at the five o'clock mass. It was good. Yep, and uh, we got some photos. I think to okay. recap uh, our day yesterday, it was really nice. Uh, like you said, uh, over 120 or just close to 120. 120 is what we have in the notes. So. Oh, it's what we have in the notes. <laughs> so we're going with that. <laughs> so, I, if, was it exa exactly 120? Yeah, I don't pretty know. close there. Pretty good size group though. And great looking. I mean, the, the photos that uh, we had. Somebody take some great photos last night. You can see. Yeah. Uh, really nice celebration. I said at nine o'clock that the weather cooperated, and then it I jumped all over you. Apparently, it didn't <laughs> no, cooperate like, for you. What are you talking about? No, it didn't. Well, I mean, it, it rained throughout the day at different points, and then yeah, I was had a party and grilling some salmon, and it was off and on rain, right? Intermittent rain. And of course, just as I'm getting the salmon off the grill, it just starts a deluge pouring. Oh, perfect. So perfect. that's perfect. why I said it didn't cooperate. So did, I'm sure your guests appreciated it, though. They did. Well, I got the umbrella, and I, got, I fixed it. So anyway, And you're a good so. cook, too, so I'm sure it was good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we had First Communion yesterday, and then we are wrapping up our series we're calling Victory, the fifth week of our series. We started on Easter Sunday. And just recap, we've uh, if you've missed any of the message, by the way, you can always go to churchintivity.com slash messages, churchintivity.com slash messages in here. But we've been kind of doing these character studies. Yeah. And we've looked at Thomas, and we've looked at Peter, and we've looked at Paul. So 
any of these three that you associate with? Yeah, I think it's been a great series. Like we don't, and with the lectionary, we don't get to do a character study. So it's kind of a neat approach to this, uh, this, this series, which I've, I liked. The week that stood out to me the most was the one on Paul. Okay. I don't think it's the person that I necessarily would have related or connected with the most. Yeah. Um, well, we talked about these, the temperaments, if you're familiar with that. Each of the people we've looked at kind of represent. Thomas is kind of melancholic. I, I associate with that. Me too, right. Okay, all right, that is you. you know, Peter is a sanguine or impetuous kind of guy. And then Paul is this choleric, red, hard-charging kind of guy. Hard-charging guy. Yeah, well, I, we, we just had a great conversation in our small group that week about the gifts and skills, the talents. Speaking of talent, yeah. we're here with such great talent today. <laughs> All the, the, the gifts and talents that God has given us and how early in Paul's life he was using those gifts uh, against God. the gospel, yeah, yeah. against God, against the spread of Christianity, and how God sort of redeemed and, and used that. And we just had a great conversation about gifts and talents. A lot of young people in our small group, so encouraging them to take assessments and strengths right. finder and yeah, all those yeah, things to good. figure out how God has yeah. wired you and how he might want to be using that stuff to build his kingdom and serve and impact others. Yeah, and I think even if you, you know, temperament-wise or personality-wise, you didn't connect with each of these, something in their story, you know, Thomas, for some people, it's doubt. For uh, Peter, past mistake and how it got Jesus redeemed that. Paul, yeah, redirecting talents and gifts in a way that's um, uh, redeeming, you know, those kind of um, redeeming the past. So a lot of good stuff uh, in the series. You go to churchtv.com slash messages if you missed any or want to watch them again. And then today we'll be talking about Wrapping up. Barnabas. Not Barabbas, <laughs> not Bartholomew, not, not Bartimaeus. Not Bartimaeus. I said, <laughs> almost said earlier. Almost said. Barnabas. So, little known story. I don't think people know a lot about Barnabas. Probably not. And then we're going to talk about a little known story in Barnabas's life, but that actually had a big, sto- a big, big impact on Paul. So, who everyone does know about. So, hopefully, people are interested and want to learn more. I think so. I mean, yeah. always when you're going to the little known. It's nice. You get, you know, you have a little Bible study. So yeah, everyone Wrapped likes those little facts. So yeah. uh, Father Michael's going to do a great job in the message p- presenting that. If you don't know anything about Barnabas, again, pretty cool part of his story. Uh, you're going to learn about today, so it'll be coming up in the message itself. And then we're wrapping up a series. Which always means the start of a new series follows right behind. So next weekend we are kicking off a new series we're calling Celebrate What Matters. Celebrate What Matters. So as part of that series, uh, this time of year, late spring, right? Uh, in early summer, which this series is going to cover both. A lot of celebrations going mm-hmm. on. We have uh, First Communion, which we just talked about this weekend. Confirmation, which we'll talk about in a second. We have next weekend. There's graduations. There's Memorial Day. There's what else? What else? Yeah, I think you've got it. <laughs> I got them all. Okay. Weddings, so, maybe. Springtime. Wed- oh, yeah. Weddings. Yeah, oh, yeah, I should have thought of that. Yes. yes. Weddings. <laughs> it's been a long time since my wedding. So anyway, um, all this kind of celebration of, of what matters. And so uh, also this time of year, the church celebrates some kind of key uh, feast, uh, right. the feast of uh, we have Holy Trinity, we have Corpus Christi, we have Pentecost and Ascension. Not in that order. I totally messed up the order. But we have all those things. So we're going to talk about why do we celebrate them? Why do they matter? And we're, as we talk about celebrating what matters. And then some other things will be going on in that series as well. Yeah, that's right. We're, with the wrap-up of the year, we're, of course, with First Communion and Confirmation celebrating our Next Gen team and all the ministers that help make that uh, happen each and every year, preparing our kids uh, and their faith for their sacraments. So we're going to be talking about Next Gen Ministries and how you might want to be involved in the coming year to join their team. Uh, always springtime, talk about things to celebrate missions, getting out of the house, the weather's nicer. There's a lot going on with missions. Rebuilt, you're going to be up in a few weeks. Yeah, talk so. about our impact of other parishes. So Lots of good stuff. And then confirmation is next weekend. Yep. So we got confirmation next weekend. We have a, a ton of confirmation candidates. And so we'll have mass at 2.30 and 5 o'clock. 2.30 will be celebrated by Bishop Adam Parker. And then no one other than the Archbishop himself, Archbishop Laurie, will be here for the 5 o'clock. So uh, doubly blessed with bishops next week uh, for Confirmation Mass. So 2.30 and 5 p.m. next uh, next weekend, so next Saturday. So the weekend message, the brand-new message series, will only be at 9 and 10.45 next Sunday. Well, we are moving closer to the start of Mass. So I encourage you to prepare your minds, prepare your hearts, because God has something to say to you today. So get ready. It is time for week five of Victory. Welcome, church. We're so glad you're here. Please stand and worship with us. Let me out of the desert. 
coming into history, river of living water, turn my bitter into sweet, and all the burdens are lifted, you took the shackles off my feet, there's no sound down there, the captive said. and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to everyone joining us here on Ridgely Road and everyone joining us online today as we continue our celebration of the resurrection of the Lord on this fifth Sunday of Easter. To begin, let's begin confidently placing ourselves before God's mercy. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God. 
in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill we pray Almighty ever-living God, may those you were pleased to make new in baptism under your protective care bear much fruit and grow in charity. We pray through our Lord Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Well, thanks so much for joining us again today. Now, as we move into the Liturgy of the Word, it's a great time to take younger kids to another device to take advantage of our online presentations for both Time Travelers and All Stars. Time Travelers is our children's Liturgy of the Word, and it is a fun, interactive program for elementary school age kids. All Stars is our preschool program for kids ages six weeks to six years, and both can be found on our website at churchnativity.com slash kids. Now, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts to hear from God's Word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirit of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord in whom they put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga and they went down to Italia. From there they sailed to Antioch where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw a holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eye, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Since the beginning, we have needed rescue. Then God became flesh and blood. Dying on the cross, 
and defeating the grave so that we may be saved. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter and the fifth and final week of our current message series for the season of Easter. We've been calling this series Victory because Easter celebrates victory. Jesus' victory, his win over death as well as our redemption. As we've seen, redemption is compensation. It's compensation for faults or failures of something or someone We use the word redeemed when an experience was difficult or disappointing, but then turns out all right in the end. A good outcome, a happy ending, a great reversal can make up for a whole lot of difficulties or disappointments. In our heart of hearts, we all want to be redeemed because we know we're not perfect. Sometimes we're far from perfect, and that's a problem because we all want to be liked and loved. We long to be something more than we are now. Throughout history, theologians and philosophers have all taught the same thing. I must do more. I must do more to make me right. I am not now who I could be or should be. I must do more. And as we've already noted, the difficulty with that perspective When the challenge or problem with you is you, then how can you be expected to fix you? Christianity offers another way forward. Because that desire we have in our heart, that desire to be liked and loved, it's not unique to you or me. It's actually given to us by God. And ultimately, it points to a desire to know and love him, to be pleasing to the Lord. And that's precisely where Jesus' life, death, and resurrection come in. Jesus lived a perfect life in a way we can't. Each day and every way and every moment of his life, he obeyed his Father in a way we don't. He lived a perfectly life, perfectly pleasing to God, and that put us back in right relationship with God. God accepts his life on our behalf. That's redemption. His victory can redeem us and make our stories success stories. We see this so clearly in the story of the early church. The first friends and followers of Jesus were very flawed individuals, that's for sure. However, Jesus chose them, flaws and all, to lead his church. So over the course of this series, we've taken a closer look each week at a few of those first followers, their specific faults and flaws, as well as the change and transformation that they experienced as Christ followers. We began a few weeks ago by looking at a fellow named Thomas. Thomas had to overcome pessimism, skepticism, and doubt, and he did, to become the most prolific of all the apostles. Two weeks ago, we discussed Peter, who was redeemed from the seemingly unforgivable sin of betraying Jesus to go on to become the leader of the apostles. Last week, we looked at Paul, whose redemption story is perhaps the most dramatic of all of the apostles. He moves from chief prosecutor of the Christian community to its most influential defender and promoter. As we close out this series, we're going to look at just one other uh, apostle. But as we close out this series, a reminder that if you've missed any or all of this series, you can always catch up online, on demand. It's also the place to share a message with family or friends. The fellow we're looking at today is never, ever described in a negative way. His character and personality are only shown in an entirely positive light. 
The others that we've looked at in this series have stories of redemption received. Redemption received. This guy's story casts him more as an agent of redemption, a cooperator of, with redemption. In fact, what makes this guy a kind of hero in the New Testament and definitely someone to emulate is that he seemed to specialize in helping people who appeared to be failures and turning their stories into success stories, the very heart of redemption. This guy developed, empowered, and released others to make an impact in the world for Christ. He's first introduced in the fourth chapter of Acts, and his given name was Joseph. And the first thing we learned about Joseph was his generosity. The church in Jerusalem at that time was in chronic financial need. And at one point, Joseph sold a piece of property that he owned, giving the money to the apostles. In turn, they give him a new name. They dubbed him Barnabas, which translates son of encouragement. His gift encouraged, equipped, and uplifted the whole church. And as a result of his gift, which was given humbly and at just the right time, Barnabas easily won great favor and trust among the leaders of the church. And that favor and trust only grew over time. Well, eventually, Barnabas decides to cash in on that trust. After Paul's conversion to Christianity, which we looked at last week, he came to Jerusalem to try and join the apostles. But they were afraid of him. They didn't believe that he had truly converted, only that he was trying to infiltrate their group and have them all arrested, as he'd been doing before his conversion. Take a look at what happened. Barnabas took charge of Paul and brought him to the apostles, reporting to them how he had seen the Lord and spoken to him. So Barnabas stands up for Paul and vouches for him. You know, whenever we do that, when we recommend someone for a job or position, for admission to school, a school or a club, we take a risk. It's our word, it's our reputation, it's our judgment that's on the line. Barnabas takes a chance on Paul because he sees real potential in him. How did it turn out? Well, Paul moved about freely throughout Jerusalem and spoke out and debated in the name of the Lord. Paul's a fighter. He's a debater. He's a passionate firebrand whose preaching sets in motion a firestorm in the church of Jerusalem. So much so that they tried to kill him. The community was murderly frustrated with Paul's efforts. And that might be hyperbole, but even so, the experiment of Paul in leadership in the church failed badly. When the brothers learned of this, they took Paul down to Caesarea and sent him on his way back to Tarsus. In other words, they got the guy out of town as quickly as possible. And it's easy to imagine the disappointment and disapproval they expressed toward Barnabas too. Paul failed in his first attempt to become a Christian leader. But it wasn't just his failure. It was Barnabas' failure too. He'd put his reputation on the line and it seemed, it seemed as if it was misplaced. But despite that setback, the apostles' confidence in Barnabas remained so high that they later make him a leader of a growing community of believers in the city of Antioch in Syria. The Acts of the Apostles goes on to tell us this. When Barnabas arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and, what does Barnabas do? He encouraged them. He encouraged them to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit, and with faith. Barnabas goes to Antioch, and once again, we see him encouraging other Christ followers. He brings an encouragement that they needed at the time to persevere in their faith, despite the dangers of their faith that they experienced from a culture hostile to their faith. And what's the immediate result? 
a large number of people were added to the Lord. You know, encouraging leadership helps things grow. Encouraging leadership helps the church grow. Probably a, a good point for me to keep in mind. But this is a key theme of Acts. The church grows only and always because it's God's will for it to grow. But it only grows when and where church leaders exercise good leadership. These verses convey a sense of peace and equilibrium among the believers at Antioch, a time of growth and prosperity, so much so that they could actually help other Christian communities financially, which is why Barnabas' next move was so puzzling. Take a look. Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Paul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. You got to wonder why. Why would he do that? The last time he brought Paul into leadership, it blew up on him. Why risk it again? Well, apparently, Paul, Barnabas still believed in Paul and saw potential, still believed that he could be redeemed. So he goes to Tarsus to look for Paul, willing to give him a second chance. Paul responded with enthusiasm and returns to Antioch with Barnabas. And apparently, he learned his lesson because this time the mission was successful. For a whole year, they met with the church and taught great numbers of people. There it is again, church growth, great numbers. This initial effort in Antioch was actually the launching point for a missionary journey Paul and Barnabas undertook to various other cities in that region. Through their preaching and teaching, they would win converts to the faith, select leaders, and establish meeting places for fellowship and the celebration of the Eucharist. These were the very first local community churches, parishes, if you will. This was also the first time Christ's followers were called Christians. Paul and Barnabas were a brilliantly effective team and remained so for a number of years. But the point here is that Barnabas was mentoring and encouraging Paul the whole time throughout their missionary activity. And Paul, Paul was growing as a leader. Anyway, the story comes full circle as they return home. They sailed back to Antioch where they'd been commended to the grace of God for the work they had accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they went back to the church of Antioch to share the good things God was doing through their church. This is actually something we do as a staff here each Monday. We get together and share the good things God did over the past week and weekend at Nativity. We do it to encourage one another for the week ahead. You should try it in your family or with your work team or friends at school. Encourage one another with the good things that are going on. Well, eventually, Paul and Barnabas undertake separate missionary efforts, though despite some disagreements, they remained friends. And when last we leave him in the story, Barnabas is mentoring yet another young disciple with his own spotty track record. His name was John Mark, and you know him. He's the guy who went on to eventually write the Gospel of Mark. Think about that. Barnabas, Barnabas's greatest contribution wasn't even anything he ever did himself. It was the investment and encouragement he made in the lives of others. Without Barnabas, Paul would never have undertaken his missionary activity that introduced Christianity to Europe and Asia. Neither would he have had the inspiration or occasion to write 14 books of the New Testament. And Mark, Mark certainly would never have written the gospel. 
Fully half of the New Testament would never have been written if not for Barnabas's encouragement. Our greatest contribution to God and one another might not even ever be anything we do directly. In fact, it probably won't be. But our greatest contribution could be encouraging one another. It could just come as God uses us as his chosen instrument to redeem others. So, who are you encouraging? Is there someone others have given up on that you can still believe in? Someone who has a spotty track record who could use a second chance even though they don't deserve a second chance. Someone you believe could be a force for good or great things with just a little bit of coaching. Maybe your challenge is simply to change the way you deal with some of your direct reports or neighbors or classmates. Could you make a greater investment in them? Be like Barnabas. Be like Barnabas. Be a son or daughter of encouragement who lifts others up and helps them see all they can be in Christ. Your Redeemer died on the cross and rose from the dead and now lives in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus' death and resurrection gives us a fresh start, a new beginning, proving that our past faults and failures can not only be forgiven, they can be forgotten. They can be redeemed. The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God hears us in our need, let us turn to him in prayer. For Christians everywhere, as we celebrate the resurrection, that the Lord's victory over death would lead us to greater charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders and healthcare workers, that the men and women, for the men and women of our armed services, that they be strengthened in their service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from violence throughout the world, especially amid the conflict in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of mind and body, for the homebound and the lonely, for all those living in poverty, may they know strength in their faith and freedom from fear, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the victims of the shooting in Buffalo, that God may bring comfort to all in mourning and an end to racism and violence everywhere. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For all those who have gone before us in faith, may they know light and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, hear the Easter prayers of your children and answer according to your will. We pray through Christ our Lord. At Nativity, we like to treat students as adults. We extend respect and trust to them. We honor and recognize their unique personalities, and we work to promote the gifts and talents they bring to our congregation. We know that students really do desire God and want to have a personal relationship with Him. That's why we create small group environments where students can have authentic conversations about faith. Groups provide a space where teens can ask questions and develop relationships with their peers and with caring adults who are not their parents. Most importantly, we treat students like adults by seeing them as leaders and partners in ministry. When they serve, students make crucial contributions to the life of our parish. They bring zeal to our mission and we are astounded by their impact. Students are not the church leaders of tomorrow. They lead now, and when you give, 
you are investing in current and future leaders of Nativity. Your support is a gift that will continue to multiply for generations to come. at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church receive our prayer and offering make it acceptable to you we pray through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks father most holy through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. Now with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, 
Sanctus Dominus Deo Sabao, plene sunt celi etera, gloria tua, hosana in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, hosana in you are indeed holy, Lord, the font of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit, so they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Remember your church, spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, St. Michael, the Archangel, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobi. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobi. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, 
Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In the 
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord our God, and lead those you have fed with bread from heaven to pass from former ways to newness of life. We pray through Christ our Lord.
new message series. It begins next weekend. We're calling it Celebrate What Matters. And a reminder that a brand new message series is a perfect time to invite that unchurched family member or friend or coworker or someone who doesn't have a church to check out our church. And if you are new this weekend because someone has invited you, welcome. We love welcoming new people into our community. We love it so much. We have a gift to thank you for being with us today. If you're joining us online, you can text the word welcome to 410 416-5534. Text the word WELCOME to 410-216-5534. If you're joining us here on Ridgely Road, you can do that, or you can stop by our welcome desk out in the concourse, and we'll be happy to give you that gift. Well, today we wrapped up our series, uh, Victory, and we looked at the character of Barnabas, Barnabas, uh, who is an encourager. So that's our encouragement to you this week. Who do you need to encourage? Who's God placing on your heart to encourage? And maybe that's someone that's underneath your authority, and you can look at how you can be more of encouraging uh, to them in some way. Maybe you're asked to take a risk on someone, but who is somebody God is calling you to encourage this week? Now, Pastor, that was such a great message. I mean, you have such great insight into Scripture, a, a great teaching, and the way you use the Scripture screen, I just... Just want to encourage you how good you were today. That's Tom faking encouragement. <laughs> fake, fake encouragement is worse than no encouragement at all. <laughs> hey, we had a great day yesterday. It's one of the big days of the whole year. Very special day. It was First Holy Communion Day. We had not one but two First Communion masses and i think we have some photos there we go yeah of our some of our first communicants right yeah we had about 120 or 120 plus including my daughter lydia including your daughter lydia who's a real charmer too she's she is a beauty and a charmer you're going to have your hands full with her (laughs) That, that is true so seven down one to go on first communions there you go really Yes. You're done after it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I guess you heard it here first. I hope you got, somebody was clapping over there. <laughs> um, I hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you next weekend. We love you very much. And if you'll stand here in church or online at home, I'll share with you a blessing for the coming week. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he bless you this day and each day of the coming week. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Well, thank you so much for being a part of our online experience today. Hey, if you missed any of the messages through our series, Victory, remember you can always go to our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com slash church nativity to catch up on past messages. You can check out all our resources for families, for kids and students there. We've got great worship music as well as our mass archives. So lots of good stuff. Head to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash church nativity. Thanks again for being a part today. So glad to have you with us. Know that we love you. We're praying for you and we look forward to seeing you back here next week.